I'm gonna throw this blindly up the stairs and hit this in one. Ready? All right. Count me down. One, two, three. That's not counting down. Three, three, two, one. What's up, guys? I'm Nick, and this is Build Dad Build, a place where we like to put the yippee in yippee kaye. Motherfucker. Today, we're making cornhole boards. I still don't know why I call them cornhole boards, guys. Like sandbags, bags, bag o, anything like that. Come on. Cornhole points, man. You lose points. And it's going to be a pretty straightforward build. I, there's a million videos out there on how to build cornhole boards. So I'll actually link to a playlist of videos that I watched to learn how to build mine. The dimensions are pretty straightforward. You're going to have a two foot by four foot surface for the boards. I just went out and bought pre-cut two foot by four foot pieces of plywood because I don't have any real good way to get like a four by eight piece of plywood home. And I would really only need half of that. And then the side, you can use two by fours, you can use one by fours, you can go a little cheaper and do like a, I saw some that were done with like one by threes and whatnot. What we're gonna use is one by fours for the sides. However, we are gonna rip those one by fours out of a one by 12. Dude. The one by 12s were a little bit cheaper at the big box store than just buying the one by fours. And so I figured I'd just cut them on the table saw. We'll be using pocket holes to put the box together. I'm sorry if that's offensive to some people. Um, I love pocket holes. You're not gonna see them in the final build, so I think they're totally fine in this application. Um, I'm gonna use the K4 system to do this, but you can buy, but you can use something as small as this to do the same thing with pocket holes. Uh, I'll link to this down below along with the K4. I think this one's like 20 bucks. The little hand says, it's time to get to work. Kitties. Of course the camera wasn't running when this happened, but I just had, actually I'm looking at, I got two of them on here. One of the scariest non-scary things you can have happen when you're resawing on a table saw is, uh, is what I just had happen. And I, of course, like I said, the camera wasn't running, but you see this knot in here? Well, so that's a loose piece of wood inside a closed space. So when you're cutting through, like when you finish cutting through that, that part of that knot, the whole thing will pop because literally you just freed up a little piece of, of wood inside there. Now, since it's contained, it doesn't go anywhere. But it's, I, I wish I would have had the camera running because I, I jumped when it happened because it makes you think that like something went wrong and you have to immediately shut everything off. So just keep an eye on it. If you have like little knots like this on the edge of wood when you're resawing, just be prepared for something like that to happen. It's really not super dangerous, but it is, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of horrifying. <laughs> Uh, ooh. When possible, try to cut all your boards at the same time. If your fence will allow, which is going to allow me to cut these all at 48 inches at the same time. That way, if I'm at 47 and 3 quarters, let's say, I shouldn't be that far off, but if I am, at least all of the boards are the same length. So when I go to put them together, I, I don't have to like figure out which board is out of whack, and that's why I'm out of square. So I just use something that is flat and tall enough to come in here and then I just push that against the edge here. And then I just push that so it's flat against the edge and then I'm gonna tape those, measure my final dimension on here and cut them all at once. Okay, now that the pocket holes have been drilled, I've moved down here to the floor because I don't have a work space table big enough to assemble these on, so I'm just gonna do them on the ground. The two pro tips to remember when doing uh, pocket hole joinery, especially on these, is since you've got pocket holes going in two different directions, when you're assembling your pieces, make sure that all your pocket holes are pointing the, the correct direction. In this case, I'm gonna assemble the corners first, I want all my pocket holes to either be facing up or down. You just want them all facing the same direction. Second pro slash am tip, just the tip guys, just the tip. Just remember that you're working with two different thicknesses of material, or at least I am in this build. So my sides are three quarters, my top piece of ply is half in. I'm gonna use a shorter screw to attach the plywood to the base than I am the base to itself. Other than that, just make sure your corners are square. 
Oh. Oh yeah. And just say no to crack. So a lot of times you can just look around the shop and look for something that's kind of the width of this, that's round, that you can use to uh, to cut off, cut the edges off the top here. Just look for something that's handy. If you don't have a bottle of whiskey that's the right shape, you can always use a compass. But where's the fun in that? And then you're just going to grab your jigsaw and cut them out. Okay, it's the next day. The boxes went together really well. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Next step, I have stenciled the lettering onto the box and I'm getting ready to carve it. If you guys are gonna try to make these to sell them, I would probably say skip this part. If somebody wants lettering on it, I would do like a vinyl stick on letter or something like that because you're gonna eat up any kind of profit or anything you were gonna make in time and materials because I'm actually gonna pour epoxy in this too. This is something I'm doing for a friend, so we're uh, we're doing a little bit a little bit extra. To make the the corn hole itself, the bungus of the board, the the cornhole bung, cornhole hole. It is uh, 12 inches on center and nine inches from the top is where the center of the hole. And then we get out our friend, Mr. Six Inch Hole Saw. <laughs> I was gonna cut this out with a jigsaw because when I went to Home Depot, I looked at six inch hole saws and they were like 45 bucks. And I was like, no freaking way. The game plan was always to jigsaw this and then, and then I just happened to look on the Amazons and I found a six inch hole saw for like 15 bucks. So I ordered that business and now we're gonna get to work. So here we are, we got a coat of stain on them last night. Seems to have penetrated pretty well. What I wanna do is I wanna get a coat of finish on them prior to uh, doing the epoxy pour. And the reason being is because I don't want any of the epoxy to seep into the wood. Sometimes uh, when you have a cut line, it will seep into the small micro cracks and you'll see like a little kind of spiderwebby pattern around it or lightning pattern or some sort of pattern. It's a pattern, man, trust me. Uh, I'm using my new, my new best friend here, a little Krylon lacquer. I just like the way this stuff goes on. It says it dries in 15 minutes. I'm waiting longer than that. We're just gonna put a little finish on these legs. Fun story, and this is not a sponsored video by any means, but uh, I started wearing me undies and they're super comfortable. So I found that I only wear me undies now to wear anything else. So I'm actually using my old boxer briefs to put this on. Just thought you'd wanna know that. Probably didn't. You probably really doesn't wanna know that. The client. Yeah, yeah. I use my old underwear to uh, to finish your legs. <laughs> She's cool. She'd be alright with it. So a lot of you guys have asked me about like finishing techniques, and when I put stain on, a lot of times I just put it on and take it off at the same time because I'm not really normally going for anything real deep. So like, see that? That's that's on and off already. Like there's no extra stain in there. If you want to go for a darker color or you want it to be a little bit more vibrant, especially if you're using like the colors like blues and reds and things like that, you may want to let it sit a little bit longer. But what I like to do with those is to put one coat on, wipe it off, and then go back over with a second coat and with 
do a heavy second coat and let it sit. And a lot of times that'll give you better results as far as vibrancy of color. That I've gotten a lot of comments about people saying that when they do, when they try to recreate one of my projects, they're not getting that vibrant color. And that's, that's probably why. I kind of speed through it in the video so you don't see it, so I figured I would take the time to kind of explain that. And if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to this channel. And uh, I promise I will continue to answer all of your questions in future videos. So I'm a rock and roll guy, if you haven't figured that out. But I like my, I like my old rock and roll music. I like my, my hair bands from the 80s. So I just listened to a song that, I would say this song reminds me of high school more than any other song. And that is more than words, by extreme, I don't know why. Maybe it was just because it was played a lot. I didn't have like a really serious, like long-term relationship or anything, so I don't know where that comes from. But what song takes you back to something like high school, college, or like a really memorable time? Comment down below. I'm just curious because there's just certain songs that will come on and I can't help but be there again. <laughs> All right, it is epoxy pour time. If, and I don't think you can, but if you can hear the air conditioning blowing, it's because I turned it down, so we have a good time to cure. What I do is I'm gonna measure up uh, probably 20 ounces and uh, go from there. But right now I'm gonna mix this stuff up. Let's get to work. All right, while the epoxy is curing upstairs, we are gonna just drill holes in these to accept our carriage bolts because it's a one by four. It's three and a half inches. It's three and a half inches wide. Half of that is one, in, one and three quarters inch. You're gonna measure in and down one and three quarters inches uh, to find center. And then I'm just drilling these out with a quarter inch bit. So we have Poured the epoxy and it is cured. Um, and it looks pretty damn good. So there is one board. Here is the other. And now we need to cut and install the leg assemblies. So that's what I'm doing right here. Regulation cornhole boards need to be 12 inches off the ground. So I've stacked up a paint can and uh, this very expensive spacer piece here which isn't expensive, it's just a piece of wood that I broke off, check it out. Uh, and this now measures two Z12 inches. So after I use the edge of the bench to find my angle, just transfer that angle over to here, which looks like it is a, a little over 10 degrees. Results may vary. And so now And I'm gonna use one of these as a template. Get all these guys lined up. And then we're just gonna push this into the blade. Get that one off. Okay, now we're gonna attach the legs. Basically, you're just gonna lay it down here flat, and then you just want a little bit of space in between the top of the board and the leg. So I'm using a paint stirrer. Why am I using a paint stirrer? Because it is readily accessible, and this space doesn't matter as long as it's consistent on all the legs. We're just gonna put that like that. Okay, now I'm gonna use the hole that I already had there. You take a carriage bolt, push it through, yourself a washer, and then just take your wing nut and tighten it down on right here. But this way, if it gets loose, they can always go in there and tighten it up.
right, guys. So the cornhole boards are done. And I was gonna take them outside and I was gonna show you my mad cornhole and skills. But it's like pouring down rain. So we're gonna have to settle for my dude perfect ask trick shot. Observe. We have the cornhole boards here, lighting. We have the stairs that I will be down. We get downstairs on the first floor. Blind shot into the hole, baby. All right, where is, let me get a bag. All right, we have a bag. Turn on the camera. So we got that going. All right, we can go downstairs. Ignore the lighting, ignore the lighting, ignore the lighting. Oh, hold on. Baby gate. All right, hold on. Set this down. We're going to set you here. Lock you in. All right, is it gonna work? Okay, hold on a second. All right, one more. Okay, here we go. All right, wait. I'm gonna throw this blindly up the stairs and hit this in one. Ready? All right. Count me down. One, two, three. That's not counting down. Three, three, two, one. All right. I can do this. Mind over mouth. Okay. I have no, no way to throw. Okay. Three, two, one. No way! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Mm. Holy shit guys, did you see that? No shit, one shot. Not one shot. Alright guys, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe, baby! And until next time... Well... Give me a second. Mm. Let's get to work.